So a few great books to review. Um, Millionaire Service Advisor by buddy of mine, Chris Collins. Write Service and Write Your Own Paycheck by Jeff Cowan. And I'm not sure on the other one, but it looked interesting. Uh, automotive Service Selling, Increasing Counter Sales in a Challenging Environment, which is probably pretty good for today's uh, challenging environment. When I worked uh, a number of years ago for Deal Our Facts, I remember working with a, a dealership and they were a Mitsubishi store. And I was trying to train one of the service advisors to sell stuff. And he said, um, you know, I get everyone in oil change. I said, yeah, but your dealership is an oil change for life, free oil change dealership. He goes, yeah. I said, so there's no revenue. And I said, that's probably not good for your job security, dude. You might want to rethink that one. <laughs> Which I thought was pretty hilarious. But uh, Chris Collins does a, uh, does a show on Fridays. He's also written a number of books. Pretty opinionated guy. We're going to actually have him on the show at some point. I just got to tie up the schedule with him. Uh, but uh, interesting book on how to really uh, do that well. So just a few books there. And then, of course, sponsored by the largest bank in the universe. Uh, so what should I sell in the drive is the is the title for this episode. We've got three great experts and we've got uh, some moral support from the team at BG as well. So I'm sure we'll have some comments there. Uh, myself, Ian Nethercutt, co-host, and Jeff Polo from Whistler. Uh, we're, we're hosting the show today. And this, of course, World Best Chemical Company episode sponsor. Uh, disclaimer, unfortunately, as a show, we're not responsible for anything anyone says on the show, the opinions of the company, the products they represent at any time. Um, if you have questions, it's also on our website. Uh, we just host the show and uh, we're not responsible for any opinions or content or anything shared on the show, just so you know. Uh, the Auto Hub show uh, is for our guests, not the hosts, because it's their show, not ours. Please mute or unmute yourself. You can also click raise your hand, and if you have a question, if you have a question, we will be monitoring the chat box and we'll call on you. There's a wealth of knowledge and expertise on the call, so let's share ideas and respect each other's time. All Auto Hub participants have agreed to be open to sharing ideas and are okay with others using those ideas. Relax, no one is trying to sell you today. Purpose of Auto Hub is really to share ideas and give dealers and other automotive industry professionals thoughts and, and actionable stuff they can use today. It's an open discussion on improving business. We value everyone's input, speak up and bring value. Don't be afraid to brainstorm ideas and ask questions. Be respectful of everyone's time. After all, we're all busy professionals. Please do your best to stay on topic on the call. Don't forget to challenge our speakers and help them bring value on the show. Share some details on not only vendor speed, but on sponsorships of the Out of Show to give back to the community on the show and sell more products with sponsorship. Well, thank you, Ian. Yes, I'll do that. Sponsorship, translation, meaning, definition, sponsorship, help Ian and Jeff get out of home. <laughs> so, what this means is you can sponsor our show, you get your name plastered everywhere, you for a very small, reasonable amount of money. The Auto Hub Show is growing in stature and viewership. We're getting shout outs from all over the place. And it's a terrific opportunity. And way less than one simple paid SEO, and everybody watches. And Vendor Speaks yes. are Friday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific. That is noon Eastern time. That is 1 o'clock in the Maritimes, and of course, 1 30 in Utah. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Oh, I did well. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me tell you about Auto Hub Club Show Vendor Speak. It's the place where vendors can actually speak. Oh. What does that mean? Vendors sell. Oh, selling is speaking. It's a chance for a vendor to come on for a very reasonable amount of money. Way less than just buying one S paid SEO. You come on to get an hour, you speak to your customers, you promote it, we promote it, we give you a video, and you can knock it out of the park. Check us out in Vendor Speed. So we apologize for the, uh, the uh, <laughs> rather spotty video there. We're working on that one. So today, we have three very dynamic guests. 
and um, joining us for what you should sell or should you sell in the service drive. We like to have different topics. Um, we have uh, John Tuobade coming to us from Articoding Canada, and John's a fellow I've been following on LinkedIn for quite a while, and really cool stuff, I got to tell you, make some ugly cars gorgeous. We have Jeff Hahn here, who's the... Uh, Regional Market Manager, Field Trainer for Smart VMA at BG Products, which is, yes, really cool, oily stuff. And, of course, joining us from uh, Utah today, Russ Mann, who's the VP of Sales for Permashield USA. Take it away, Ian. So, uh, I've been following, thanks very much, Jeff. So, I've been following John for quite a while. I'm going to put up uh, his uh, thing here for him right now. So John, uh, if you're not familiar with John, he's been doing a lot of stuff uh, in terms of on social for a while, showing some fantastic finishes on cars and great uh, video work as well. I'm not that familiar with the company uh, other than uh, it's Norwegian, I just understood today. Yes, sir. And so maybe John, you can tell me a little bit about the starting of the company um, and the why behind you and the company. Absolutely. Um, again, my, my name is John Til Tilbadi. Um, it's great to meet everybody in the room here. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, um, I, I own a detail business uh, called Detail and Plasti. Um, I've been running this detail uh, business since uh, about 2013. Um, I've been, um, aside from the, the different types of uh, vehicles and customers that I've uh, worked on and met along the way, um, I've done a lot of work uh, along social media and um, while doing a lot of my stuff along uh, social media, I've, I've made a lot of friends along the way and one of them happened to be uh, one of our guests that are, uh, are with us right now, his uh, name is Ivor uh, Svardale. Uh, he is the uh, owner, uh, president of Arctic Coding in Norway. Uh, he, him and his team um, had had a look at uh, some of my posts and some of the uh, vehicles that I've been working on and the different types of finishes that uh, I was able to uh, attain from uh, vehicles that are in rough condition. And uh, one of the things that uh, they wanted to do was they realized that their winters are, are very harsh over there and we tend to have uh, pretty harsh winters ourselves in Canada. And they were in the midst of creating a uh, ceramic paint protection coating that uh, they wanted to uh, have me test out in Canada to see uh, how the, the, the product would um, fare in Can the Canadian climate. And in, uh, two, in late 2014, early 2015, um, I became uh, an installer of the Arctic coating products uh, for my own personal clientele. Uh, it gave me a chance to get familiar with the product, gave me a chance to get familiar with the, the company as a whole. And um, the results were, were stunning in my opinion. Um, the, my, my, my customers would, would be speaking to other, uh, their friends and families about uh, the product. And that's how I ended up starting to kind of generate my own um, customer base. And uh, it, it finally led to uh, 2016, where I received the uh, option to um, become a distributor in Canada uh, of Arctic Coating. And uh, that's what kind of changed uh, my trajectory uh, in a sense. So uh, at this point, what I actually do now is I uh, train uh, professional detailers uh, that uh, operate on their own. And I also train uh, professional detailers that are uh, within the de uh, dealership service department uh, to provide uh, Arctic coating services uh, through through the de for the dealership. And uh, I supply the, the product and also any type of uh, um, troubleshooting, uh, any advice or any assistance that uh, anyone that supplies our coating needs is uh, provided by myself. So let me ask you a question, John. Uh, what's the benefit for dealerships to offer aftermarket products such as Arctic coating to their customers um, in service? Yes, I mean, um, I, I've been work, I've worked uh, in a dealership realm since about 2005. 
And uh, I actually left the dealership realm to start my detail of business uh, in around 2013 there. And um, I, I still uh, keep uh, in touch with a lot of my colleagues. Uh, and, and what I've kind of noticed over the years is that um, the ability to, to, to generate uh, revenue uh, in the service department is, is starting to decrease. Um, whether it be um, more electrical vehicles are coming out and, and the inability to do the routine type of things like oil changes, like you were mentioning before, the engine type of work, suspension work and what have you um, is not so much there. Um, what I also have been understanding as well is that uh, when it comes down to warranty, um, company, I mean, uh, organizations have been uh, clamping down quite a bit as it pertains to that. And there's not much room for uh, dealerships to, to um, make, generate revenue in that area as well. So, I mean, um, adding an aftermarket uh, service and products uh, such as uh, Arctic Coating uh, opens the door for dealerships to uh, generate revenue in an area where um, it's very popular. I mean, over the last couple of years, um, the whole, um, over the last couple of years, the, the whole uh, climate of, of, of uh, ceramic coatings has um, boosted quite, quite significantly. Um, there's a lot of uh, customers are coming into dealerships and asking specifically for ceramic coatings. Um, so uh, having a dealership educated as to how to speak to their customers and having uh, detailers on hand to uh, provide the service is, is uh, a no-brainer. So generally uh, products are, are considered the domain of the business office or the F&I office. Why should the service department sell your products? Because uh, not all vehicles uh, make it uh, through the, the uh, F and I office. Uh, some vehicles are are, are sold or, or purchased uh, without any type of uh, pain protection uh, or any type of uh, yeah, sorry, with any, any type of pain protection. So it gives the the service department um, the ability to uh, take up uh, that opportunity with a customer that obviously has a relationship with the with the dealership. Understood. So knowing that service advisors are under a great deal of pressure as per our show last week uh, from everybody, it sounds like, uh, and they have a short time, uh, how can they present aftermarket products for sale without harming their main focus, which is selling labor and parts for the dealership, in your opinion? I, I believe they're, they're, it, it should be considered quite one in the same. I mean, um, it's a product and it's, it's a service and it, it, it needs to be sold. So um, it just needs to be worked in. Okay. It needs to be considered just the same. So, you know, obviously it's a very unique product with, it looks like an international focus and I've seen lots of videos. Is it a product that has a higher take rate, say at a luxury dealership, like a Porsche dealership, or is it pretty much you feel that all dealers can benefit? Uh, in my opinion, I believe all dealerships can benefit. Uh, one dealership I can highlight in, in specific is is like uh, one of our uh, dealers out in um, uh, Edmonton, uh, Lexus of Edmonton. Uh, they they have uh, approximately uh, a staff of about eight detailers, and uh, they uh, provide the uh, Arctic coating services in house. Okay. And uh, it's something I've uh, sold through the business office and uh, completed through the. Uh, uh, service department's detailers and at the same time too this this the the service department has um the ability to sell uh the the service to their their clientele when they when they bring their vehicles in as well and have the detailers look after it so we had a question from the audience if the product is not sold in the business office would the service department not be selling a product that will be in conflict with the business office product presently sold? Like, is, obviously, there's got to be communication between those two departments. But do you feel that's in conflict if the business office is not doing the lead on that? Um, um, but the thing is, when a vehicle comes into the, the service department, it's already by bypassed the sale. So um, the sales has an opportunity to offer that uh, paint protection product, uh, like Arctic coating. Um, at, at the business office. Now, um, after the vehicle uh, ends up on, on the road and ends up coming back to the dealership, um, 
it's at that point uh, at the service where they have the opportunity to to sell that product there. Right. Now, um, when it comes to um, aftermarket uh, paint protection products, um, it, there there is a, a fine line there, and um, when it comes to um, the different products out there, we need to kind of, in my opinion, I, I like to uh, stick with one particular product so that it doesn't confuse the, the customers and themselves. Understood. So if the dealership selling multiple paint protection products, they may just want to choose one to make it simpler for the dealership staff. Absolutely. 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 What do you think the biggest hurdle in selling these products in service would be, in your opinion? <sighs> Uh, I would I would believe um, it's it's education. Um, I, I feel, uh, and this is just me speaking here, but um, I feel that uh, a lot of a lot of dealerships tend to treat their detail department as a expense, as opposed to a department that can actually be profitable for them. And um, there are a few dealerships where I've seen where they where they rent. Right, well, they essentially rent out their uh, um, detail detail uh, facility to an outside company to look uh, to look after uh, all the dealerships needs, which allows that business to um, also look at outside retail work as well. So, I mean, um, it, it's really more more or less an, an educational thing, in my opinion. So, if the, if the dealership has their own detail staff, how difficult is it for these uh, specialists to learn how to apply this coding? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 to be honest with you, it's, it's fairly easy. Um, there, there definitely is prep, prep, preparation involved. And um, through through uh, my training, um, I, I, I get uh, people up to, up to spec to be able to offer the surface uh, the same way that I put it out there. And that's true uh, across Canada and into the US, I'm assuming? Um, we're just starting to about break into the U.S. We have a few dealers out in uh, the U.S. that are, are currently using uh, our product. Okay. Um, we in in designing this product, um, we designed it especially for the dealership. Um, we were looking at different um, um, issues that uh, a dealership may run into by trying to offer ceramic coating, whether it be uh, the, the, you know there are some ceramic coatings out there where they require a, a couple of days for the for the vehicle to be at the at the shop, or it requires a couple of hours or so for the product to be applied. So, um, you know, we uh, took that all into uh, consideration, and we had developed uh, a one-step um, paint protection product, uh, ceramic coating that uh, works uh, exceedingly well for the dealership realm. And in terms of profit and retention, does this drive both for dealerships? I'm assuming. Uh, excuse me, sir. In terms of profit for the drive and retention of customers, is this drive both? Oh, right. I, I, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Because once you uh, have have a vehicle that's been, um, you know, protected by Arctic coating, um, it, it's not just it just doesn't end there. We again, it's all part of the whole educational process. Because when when a vehicle is uh, protected with like a ceramic coating. The customer is educated on how to look after the the finish and 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 to be able to get the best out of it, and also the the uh, the uh, service advisor also trained so that um, the customer is coming back every year for a maintenance check, which involves a, a wash and 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 to ensure that the the uh, uh, ceramic coating is performing the way that it should, and if and if not, then you know it, whatever issue is addressed at that point. Fantastic. Well, I'm sensitive to time, John. We got to move on. So go ahead, Mr. Jeff. And um, just actually, just before uh, we move on to, to Russ, I see him sitting there just chomping at the bit. Um, there was, was a question that we did miss from all the other ones. Uh, quickly, John, how do your products differ from others in the market that are like it? Um, <laughs> that's a, a, a bit of a loaded question because, I mean, there's only two products that I, I've actually dealt with um, at all. But um, what I can say is that uh, we do have a product that I, I myself have thor thoroughly tested through uh, the Canadian climate and have uh, attained uh, incredible results. Um, we have um, dealers uh, out uh, around Canada that are currently uh, providing this uh, particular service to uh, their clientele and um, I've heard nothing but uh, good, good things. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, nice little comment there from Tiago. Good, good job. Your pictures on LinkedIn are awesome. So that's great. And uh, so moving on to Russ, who gave you another nice compliment. Uh, so I, I have to tell you, uh, so we have Russ joining us uh, from uh, somewhere in Utah. And uh, sometimes uh, we always talk about Canadian stuff that we have harsh winters and everything. I know Russ has to live through very harsh winters at home. Sometimes it's like it drops to like 68 degrees at night. And uh, but what's that about 16, 17 in Celsius. But I have to tell you, Permashield's uh, certainly a well-known product. But what I really love about uh, just a little bit of uh, connections I've had with Russ is his uh, LinkedIn profile says, I help dealers grow their tire business and make more profit using Permashield tire sealants. Uh, Russ, tell us a little bit more. Wow, what? I, that's kind of a tricky. Com I, I, I'm a lost. I don't even know what to say after that introduction. That's that's probably one of the best ones I've ever had. Hey, no problem. Anytime. Man, you got that on tape, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm from Arizona. Uh, I'm traveling this week. I'm in Utah, so it is a little chilly uh, this morning. It got into the 50s. I was looking for my down coat this morning. Um, because I'm from Arizona, I live in Arizona. So 68. That's short weather in Canada. Yeah, yeah. I I couldn't even fathom living in Canadian weather anymore. The uh, but certainly love the opportunity to be here. Appreciate the opportunity uh, to uh, speak in front of these uh, professionals and, and get our product more well known and, and get our product better understood. Uh, because I think a lot of people have these misconceptions about Permashield and tire, se tire sealants in general. Um, so I do have a quick uh, slideshow that I'll roll through. Uh, if you don't mind, I won't take the video portion of it away at all, uh, or I won't play the video portion of it away. Um, but um, ultimately, uh, Permashield uh, really is about guaranteeing that the vehicles don't get flat tires anymore. Um, it is absolutely a revolutionary product um, that no matter what you do with it um, or uh, up to a quarter of an inch size hole in your tread, um, your tire won't go flat. So my background is, is, is irrelevant. Ultimately, it's about Permashield. Um, I have been in the car business a long time, um, but really what the facts are is that dealer profits are being compressed. And John touched about it a little earlier. Dealer profits are being compressed in the United States upwards of $400 per car uh, just since 2018. Um, many dealers are tired of the same old products. Uh, agents or vendors, they come in, oh, I got this great VSC, I got this great new GAP program, I got this, well, what can I, uh, I already have that, right? So this positions itself into a space that no one's ever seen. It's not the same old, same old products. We know that on average, seven tire punctures occur every second in the United States. That's 220 million flat tires a year. Uh, is an enormous uh, problem in the United States. One third of all new vehicles sold today do not have a spare tire. Um, in efforts to get the uh, government mandated miles per gallon uh, numbers higher, uh, OEMs are lowering weights and the easiest way for them to do that is through the spare tire. 20% of all drivers that even if they had a spare tire don't know how to change the tire. 27% um, of all roadside emergencies are tire related. So one in four, it's not just batteries. It's not just, you know, uh, out of gas. Um, one in four is tire related. Um, and then the biggie that we work on every day to try and resolve is that 12% of those a pedestrian accidents um, uh, are fatal. So uh, we're always constantly working and, and moving towards uh, getting better so that we can eliminate flat tires uh, completely. Ours is the only permanent tire sealant, that's a key word, permanent tire sealant, that eliminates the flats, is t tire pressure monitor system friendly, and does not create a chronic vibration in the vehicle. Um, the product itself, um, it prevents a seal, or prevents and seals a puncture up to a quarter of an inch size hole. So a nail, a screw, some kind of an object goes into the tread of that tire up to a quarter of an inch. Uh, Permashield will seal it. Uh, it will not allow the tire to lose uh, uh, pressure and will continue to be able to maintain and drive the vehicle, certainly to get out into a safe uh, location or get it repaired or whatever. Uh, it's not gonna blow out on you. Um, it is, here's the key component. Uh, it is water soluble. Traditional tire sealants are glue and petroleum based. So they're very sticky, nasty, just ugh, stuff. Ours is water based. It is not sticky. Uh, it uses uh, air pressure 
um, along with centripetal force to make sure that the product stays on the tread. When it stays on the tread, it seals the hole. Is the tire pressure monitor system safe? 2008, the mandate from the U.S. government, I'm sure in Canada it was the same, uh, for the tire pressure monitor systems to be installed on every single vehicle sold in the United States. Traditional sealants, they all went away. They were very popular in the 90s um, and the early 2000s, but they, they can't handle the, the tire pressure monitor systems because they ultimately harden because they are petroleum and glue-based. Um, and they ruin the sensors at you know seventy dollars a piece. Um, our product uh, travels directly through the sensor, uh, does not stay in the sensor, and it stays on the tread wall. It doesn't move around uh, significantly like traditional sealants do. Um, and then here's our here's our big whammy: the product is made with Dupont Kevlar. Everybody understands and knows the power and strength of Dupont's Kevlar. We only use Dupont's Kevlar, the original manufacturer of the of the product. Uh, essentially, if, if if it can stop a bulletproof vest, or, or if, it, if it's in a bulletproof vest and it can stop bullets, um, you know, we thought, wow, why couldn't we put it in this product too, so that it can bond with the rubber and our polymer, um, so that, that it will uh, stun the tire and loss of pressure. Okay, um, the uh, and here's the the next. It just gets get just gets better. Uh, it's guaranteed 100%. We guarantee that we will repair or replace the tire um, up to three years. Uh, if it fails to prevent the flat. So if you get a, a, a hole, a, a quarter of an inch size in diameter, size of a pencil, uh, we'll repair or replace the, the tire for free uh, for three years, okay? Uh, you can also buy, there's all kinds of different ways you can do that, uh, but you could also buy longer terms as well, okay? Um, and then, so ultimately, what's in it for the customer? What's in it for the, uh, and I'll get to the service drive in a second, but what we're helping customers is that we're allowing them to save time. Average roadside assistance call in the United States is over two hours today. It's better convenience. You get a flat, or you get a puncture on your uh, tire, or a nail goes in your tire on a Tuesday night, you come out Wednesday morning, bang, it's flat. Now you've wasted a half a morning because you got to uh, figure out, one, how to get your kids to school, how to get to work, how to to repair the tire, how to do all those things, and then of course the safety factor. We don't want people to be left on the side of the road uh, with vehicles whizzing by them at 70 miles an hour. Uh, I drove uh, from Phoenix to Utah here yesterday, um, and I saw at least a half a dozen flat tires on the way uh, with people, and here in Utah, the speed limit is 80 miles an hour. Um, so it's incredibly unsafe to uh, be stuck out there somewhere with a flat tire, let alone in the middle of somewhere uh, as well. So I'll see the video. Uh, portion. Yeah, I'll skip the video. I'll skip the video portion. Everybody's awake now, right? Wow. Um, yeah. The uh, uh, so what's ultimately in it for the dealer? The product is non-cancelable. So whether it's sold in the finance office or if it's sold in the service drive, once it's in the tire, it can't be taken out uh, and refunded. There's virtually no upfront cost. We will supply the product for you. Um, you sell the product and then pay for the product. It adds real value to a car deal. Every single customer that comes into the service drive has experienced a flat tire. Every single customer in one way, shape, or form has had and gone through that pain of a flat tire. It's a differentiator. It sets you apart as a dealership. Um, if you're doing a proper MPI, you know you're already talking about tires. Customers need new tires. They've experienced those problems. It differentiates you from everyone else. It increased the profits in, in all departments. Obviously, there's a parts markup. There's a, a, a markup in the sales side if you sell it in F and I. There's a markup in the service drive. Uh, there's an hour for installation. Whatever it is, those structures that you want to put in place, they're all completed. It is no mess, non-stick, um, nothing uh, uh, non-flammable and easy storage. So there's no hassles with uh, the barrel, the buckets, all easy to, to take care of. High-end product uh, that has run-flat tires. It essentially makes a run-flat tire. Um, I'm sure everybody on this call understands that when you when you puncture a run-flat tire, it runs out of air still. Um, if you have perma shield in your run-flat tire and it got a quarter of an inch size hole, your run-flat tire doesn't even know that it needs to use its run flatness, right? <laughs> that, that product piece doesn't come into play at all. Um, ultimately, uh, 50 miles and 50 miles an hour is all you can go on a run-flat. Um, we so in Arizona, where I'm from, if, you have, if you're at the Grand Canyon, you catch a, a, a thorn, it's a $700 tow to the nearest BMW dealership, as an example. Um, so it, plus, then you, depending on tread wear, you also have to replace opposing tire and recommended, especially by Audi, that you replace all four because of the uh, traction sensors. 
Um, it increases your remote delivery selling, and it also increases your uh, customer attention in the service drive. The customer attention piece in the service drive uh, is a big deal. You have a lot more opportunities to talk to customers in the service drive than you do in the sales department. Ultimately, in the sales department, uh, you sell 200 vehicles a month. In the service drive, you see 2,000 customers a month. Uh, Question so the, for you, Russ, from the audience. If, yeah. if uh, that customer has two sets of tires, so they have a winter set and a summer set, um, would it, obviously, I just question whether you, you'd recommend this treatment for both or what's, what's the thought there? So, yes, it depends on if you keep the wheel. If you, keep, if you have literally two sets of tires with the wheel, then it's no problem. Uh, there's no issue. If you're changing the wheel and changing the tire on that single wheel, then you would have to replace the perma shield each time that you did it. Uh, but yes, it would continue to operate and work uh, the same way. So if I took it off the rim and I put the other tire on the rim, I'd have to be shot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Great question. Well, Russ, Russ, I, to interject here for a moment, too, what are your challenges uh, when you have with, with people selling this in the service drive? What do you run into um, from the people? Yeah, the it's, people actually work there. Yeah, it's, it's really an education piece. And to piggyback on what John said about the education and helping them to understand that it's not fix a flat, is it, to use a competitive term, this is not a temporary solution. This is a permanent uh, fix to anything that may happen to you in the first place. Um, and then two is helping them to understand and fit it into their wheelhouse. Training of the service drive is a critical component to that because they, like you guys talked about earlier, they are busier than a you know, one leg donkey and a whatever, right? <laughs> so uh, they have to be able to get it out in a 30 second spiel that they understand and can connect with the customer. If they're doing all the other things right, multi-point inspection around the wheel and the tire, like everybody trains and teaches on, um, then it's kind of a no-brainer to say, you know what, by the way, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, we also have an opportunity now with a brand new product called Permashield. gives you the chance to never have a flat tire ever again. Would that interest you at all? What do you mean not have a flat tire ever again? What, uh, what do you mean? You go on to explain it. Or you get the customer says, oh, I have roadside assistance. Okay, so you've experienced the pain of roadside assistance and the two and a half hour wait that it takes or the missed morning or the missed child soccer game on a Saturday. Um, so you understand. So with this product, um, you get the opportunity to never have to deal with that again. Well, I've got another question for you. Let's just say I got a nail in my tire um, and I had this product. Do you still need to take the nail out and then reseal or how does that work? No, that's the beauty of it because the product actually seals around the nail. Most customers don't even know that they have a nail or a puncture or an object in their tire in the first place. Um, so unless they see it or hear it uh, clicking on the pavement, uh, they don't even know that they have a nail. Um, so unless they're losing pressure, most people don't even know. So yeah, you can leave it in there. It's no issue. So if they wanted to take it out, would it, would that, would it require reapply or how does that come out? No, that's the best part. Um, so if it does require, if, so you get a concern like, oh, I just don't feel right with the nail on my tire. So you take it to the dealership. You have it patched just like any other dealership you, or any other tire. You literally just move the product, clean it, patch it, and you're done. Um, put the wheel back, put the wheel back together. So if you go to our YouTube page or our, or our website, permashield.com, you'll see a video to where a tire technician actually takes the tire apart. You can see the product doesn't go anywhere. The product stays on the tread wall. Um, you can see where the nail has been punctured through it uh, and it resolved the issue. It doesn't go anywhere. It just stays right there on the tread wall. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's revolutionary. Wow. You know, it's funny. I have to say that, uh, when you get a, you've got a sales background, variable ops in the dealership, and uh, what difficulty is it for you to, to transition this for an advisor to actually get them to be a salesperson? Because I, your your presentation just tinged. It's, it's something I've done my whole life. So, sir, what if I could show you a way where you could make sure that you didn't have to spend that seven hundred in the tow or call roadside assistance or wait, etc. What do you run into there with advisors? So really, it's a, it's. I'll be frank. Most of the time, it's the attitude of the advisor, um, and the culture of the store uh, inside that store. Um, a lot of advisors, and frankly, dealerships in general, have a tough time upsetting their their apple cart. Right? They they know what they're doing. They they have a process in place, and so we're going to move along with our process. And now, Perma Shield is going to make my process go like this. Right? It's just it's just practice. In reality, it's just practice. 
And if they have some success in the beginning with that practice, um, then ultimately they, they'll have success in the long term, regardless if it's Permashield or if it's a PG product or whatever the product may be. If they can get out of their own comfort zones um, and, and just ask, um, uh, that's really the, the, the piece that, that we really run into the most. I get a lot of head nods in the service truck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, good idea, good idea, thanks. Yeah, yeah, oh, I love that, I love that stuff. You want a real change? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I've got another question. What if someone already has run flats on their car? Do you get any blowback with like, oh yeah, I already got that handle, but the tar is not going to be flat anyway. It's a run flat. You're just trying to oversell me something I don't need. Yeah, and that and and that's certainly a, a good point. But here and, and maybe in the northeast, it's it's different. You know, where you're two minutes from everything. Here in the west of the United States, you're two hours from everything. Um, so a run flat tire and the cost that is in, I don't think people realize what the cost is involved when that tire goes flat. An average run flat tire is six to $700 on a BMW. Um, and if it's an all wheel drive, you're replacing four of them. <laughs> so your X amount of dollars in investment and in, in insurance to, to guarantee that those run flats will stay and you'll never have to use the run flat is yeah. really the benefit right? It's still inconvenient. It's still going to go flat. It's, you still got to get it changed. You still have to do all those things. If you put Permashield in it, then it, it puts it on your timeline. You can get it fixed and you can get it looked at when you're ready, not when the air runs out of your tire. Right. And I think we have one more question there, I think, don't we? Yeah, is there a question? No, um, we got that one there. Um, so, what what results can a dealership realistically expect from selling your product, Art of Coding, BG products, or any one of those hundreds of other things in the in the drive? Um, so in the drive, um, we so as an example, um, if a vehicle let's so let's give you a, I'll piggyback on this. It's not just about the profitability; it's about the retention. So if you have a sales department that preloads this product on 200 vehicles a month, um, the, the sales from that and the revenue generated in the service drive adds up to a million dollars a year in gross profit. Um, so when you piggyback that on to the essentially 10 times the amount of customers that come into the service drive and an average profitability of somewhere around $300, um, and you just had a 10% closing ratio on 2,000 customers, that's another $20,000 a month in your uh, service revenue uh, in gross profit. So it, it, oh, it is crazy how much it adds up uh, if you'll just pitch it 100% of the products, 100% of the time, um, it, it, it will absolutely add up. Because everyone, so as an example, if, if uh, every, not every single person has had a DSC claim, right? Not every single person's had a gap claim, but every single person has had a flat tire. So it's very easy and quick for them to understand and to have felt the pain of that flat tire uh, in the service drive quickly. Excellent. Thank you very much. So we got to move on. So we're moving on to Jeff Pond from uh, from BG Wagon Master. So Jeff, uh, I met recently through LinkedIn. Uh, obviously, Tiago is a long uh, standing uh, supporter of the show. Um, as uh, and we also have another member of the BG team on the call. So. Uh, Jeff, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, for sure. Everybody hear me okay? All good on the audio? Yeah. You bet. Awesome. Um, okay, so yeah, my name's Jeff Hahn. I'm with BG Products. Um, you probably know us as a, a chemical provider um, and supplier and uh, a strong one at that. We're, we're currently partnered up with about 54% of franchise dealers in the U.S. and Canada. Um, so real strong footprint there. Um, me specifically, what I do is the smart BMA, uh, digital menu solution. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, I focus specifically on the Western U S and Canada. Um, obviously a lot of our, uh, go to market strategy has changed with COVID and we're doing a lot more remote, uh, selling and setups and, and things like that. But, um, you know, out in the field, working in the drive with, with advisors, uh, working with service managers to tailor their. Uh, offerings are the things that I typically do. 
Um, and in the last 18 months alone, um, I've helped set up over 200 uh, dealers with our Smart DMA program. So um, yeah, super excited and, and happy to join the show, the Auto Hub show. And uh, thanks Ian and Jeff and, and Bob at Wagon Master for, for inviting me to be here. Um, and are you seeing my screen? You're seeing it, right? Everything's good. You bet. I just need an oil change. Um, you know, for me, uh, this is what I wanted to highlight today because it's probably the number one thing your service advisors hear on a daily basis is I just need an oil change. And coming up with strategies for how to deal with that, um, how to turn it into more of a profitable retention business um, is, is really what we feel like we have, have opportunity to bring to the table with Smart DMA and also the BG product line. Um, so first, let's talk about uh, what we're seeing in terms of market dynamics and the pandemic, uh, which obviously um, some interesting stuff has happened, um, you know, in, in good times. I think we all maybe get a little bit lazy and, and, and are you know, happy to harvest what's coming in the door. Um, but when things get tough, we have to really start digging deep and figuring out, you know, what are we going to do to get through this um, in April, which is really when we saw the, the whole month, of, of COVID, we saw that heart counts dropped by 50% um, in, in a lot of cases. And uh, the interesting thing, though, is we actually saw CPRO numbers go up. And we're talking, um, you know, these are stats from Dealer FX and Automotive News. Um, January and February, the auto or the average revenue CPRO was $243. Uh, but in April, it actually rose by thirty-five dollars to two seventy-eight. So, what did that come from? Well, it was two things. Um, service advisors had more time to spend with their customers. I think uh, in dealerships, we got back to basics a little bit and said, you know what, that that menu that we haven't been presenting consistently, it's got to happen every time, right? And so we we got some management and some some emphasis on that. But then also uh, we had a real turn toward the MPI as well. And multi-point inspections had to get better so that we could do more work on the cars that were coming in. So those two things combined uh, really showed us what we have the capability of doing if we really strap in and focus on menu presentations in the drive and, and MPI process uh, to get more out of each visit. So um, there's your... There's your slide that I didn't fly for some reason. Anyway, um, so back to oil changes. Um, what we're seeing in oil changes is in August, now that we're here, oil changes are, are back to business as usual. Uh, our accounts are back up where they, they were, if not close. Um, and the average dollars have gone back down. <laughs> so, so all of that uh, extra work that we learned how to do, those good habits that we started have now sort of diminished. It's like the ocean, right? It goes and it comes. Um, and, it, and it really takes a lot of focus to, to stay up on it. Um, so advisors are spending less time with the customers. 70-80% uh, of the ROs are just an LOF um, customer. Um, management is more... Uh, putting out fires and, and dealing with the day-to-day -day. and dealers are moving away from the concierge services, you know, getting the car there, spending the extra time, all that stuff that really causing the growth um, or, or the, the staying level that we saw in, in April. And so, um, of course, this was a slide that you've probably seen a million times, but, you know, cars are getting better, um, lower cost of ownership. It's being preached sales side of the, of the business. Uh, and people really truly believe now that oil change is the only service. Um, so what we're suggesting at BG is a couple of different things for you folks to deal with your I just want to change customer. Um, and the first is to know your oil change business. Uh, we highly recommend uh, doing a market analysis, especially now since things have changed so much over the last uh, few months. Um, you know, do a detailed analysis, try to figure out um, where your, your oil change business fits in compared to the mass merchants and the quick loop oil change type, type of business. Um, and, you know, when we look at the way that we think about oil changes, we've always thought, hey, this is just a, it's a lost leader, get them in the door. 
Um, and the reality is 70% of customers still continue to affect post warranty. So, um, you know, the guys that are out there still doing first two years of oil changes for free, um, a lot of the OEMs pushing that is again, just converting customers to think I don't need to pay, I don't need to buy anything. And so we've got to come up with strategies to deal with that, right? All right, so what do we do? Um, so we do our market analysis um, and we're suggesting as BG products um, to find a differentiator other than just price. Um, so we definitely want to be competitive with price, but what we're suggesting is let's add an MOA to every oil change. And, and if you're not familiar with BG products, MOA is our, our number one product. It's our key uh, engine oil additive. Um, and when you add that to the repair order, um, it ought so now your, your customer's vehicle not only has factory warranty and, and any extended warranty coverage that they've purchased on the vehicle, but also as long as they put our additive in, uh, that gives them an extra layer of protection up to $4,000. Um, and, and basically as long as they do that every 10,000 miles, they can continue with that coverage indefinitely. There's no, there's no limit to it. So a, a really cool way to sort of differentiate your oil change from, from the guys up the street. So the market analysis, we did this with a Honda dealer. And what we found is actually um, our Honda dealer was able to be very, very competitive in terms of pricing. Um, they were at $79.95 for a synthetic oil change, which was right in the mix of the Valvolines and the Groups and the everybody else who's in the business. But they were including the MOA in that, uh, that oil change pricing, uh, which, you know, it, it may take a little chunk out of the profit part, but that knowing they want to maintain that lifetime protection coverage and just offering it. Um, you know, we've seen dealers at, at a level of uh, 60 and 70% penetration uh, rolling a program like this to market. So this is a, a large dealer group that we're working with. They're, they're sort of scattered all over, across the United States, but tons of Honda stores, tons of Toyota stores. And what you're seeing is the, the LOF penetration and then the percent usage of MOA is, is extremely strong and off the charts and, and customers are buying into it. They're seeing a consistent offering with our menu program, which we'll get into next. And the, the customers are, are buying into that lifetime protection program, uh, keeping those vehicles coming back. John, uh, sorry, Jeff, I've got a quick question for you from the audience. First of all, you're right <laughs> cutting in and out. I think it may be because it's next to your shirt. Uh, yeah, I'll hold it up, sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, what, why are some, uh, are some dealers reluctant to add, uh, MCA to every oil change? Is that MOA or MCA? MOA. Uh, MOA? Yeah, yeah, MOA. So, so the only reason a dealer would be reluctant to do it is, uh, you know, if, if they're getting pressure from the OEM saying that they're not going to help them with warranties, if, uh, oh. if it's put in under warranty. And that's something that we've had to overcome, uh, for a very long time. Uh, but, you know, the fact is uh, a manufacturer can't tell a customer that they can't have a product that they want in their vehicle and void a warranty. Um, you know, so, so why would the manufacturer want to do that then? It, 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 because what they're trying to do is keep the cost of ownership low, keep aftermarket products from being sold. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're just uh, wanting it to be done their way, essentially. And yet they want dealerships to build Taj Mahals on low profit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing but oil changes and uh, air filters, right? That's all you need. Yeah, maybe, maybe so, a plug or two. <laughs> so, what what kind of uh, objections would you hear in the drivers you're training advisors uh, that don't sell your products on a regular basis? Uh, I don't know. I, I I think advisors are all for it. Um, you know, they're, especially when you put a tool in their hands, like our, our digital uh, menu tool that I'm going to get to in a second here. Right. It, it really gives them an easy platform and easy way to, to display it and, and recommend it to the customer without having to pick it out of the lineup of things they want to offer. You know, it, it just kind of packages things together nicely for them so that they can simplify their word track and not have to spend five minutes talking about each line in the menu, if you will. Um, okay. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second, I think, okay. yeah. no. and, and cover that even further. Um, okay, so from loaf to preventative maintenance, um, that's kind of where we're going um, in terms of what we call juice in the BG world. 
And so juice, you know, um, what we're talking about is, is moving product. Uh, and, and the juice is intended not to be juice for health that we've seen here on the screen. It's intended to be uh, the MOAs, the fuel additives, the, the EPR, the, the cleaners and the conditioners that we offer that I consider uh, menu driven poor products. So these menu driven poor products, uh, we tend to see a massive increase in terms of the sell through if we can implement a program such as our, our digital menu program. So what Smart DMA is, is it's a system where in the drive, um, and you can, you can offer this in a multitude of ways, it's very flexible. Um, you can do it on an iPad, you can do it out at the car, you can do it back at your advisor station on the screen. Uh, you could even go and print them out and do them on paper. If you want to. But, but integrating this into the service drive, um, all you have to do is plug in a VIN number and we can pull up a vehicle specific uh, menu for that vehicle with sort of a good, better, best uh, thought behind where your customer can be offered all the options and they can look at that, review it uh, while you're doing your walk around or other checks on the vehicle to get it written up um, and, and basically put the power in their hands to say, okay, I want to get this, that, or the other. And then when questions come from the, the offering on the menu, uh, the, the service advisor just basically responds and and talks about the, the items that are in question. And, and you know, it's, it really simplifies the program. Um, it streamlines things in the dealership. There's a ton of backend reporting where you can identify habits of your service advisors. Um, you know, cert certain service advisors may be striking a specific service every single time off of the menu. And it may just be because they're weak in that subject. They don't understand what the product is or how to sell it. Um, and as a BG rep, I can go into the reporting and identify that somebody is striking, say, a fuel induction service consistently. Now I know that when I come in the next time to see that dealership, I should spend five minutes with that advisor and talk to them about a fuel induction service, maybe even perform a demonstration on their vehicle so they can feel the difference of, of the benefit to their vehicle um, and really get them comfortable with the word tracks and, and the way to speak about the service to the customer. Um, so it, 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 it's a whole process where once we implement it, um, we can identify uh, maybe some gaps in the consistency, you know, as you go from advisor A, who's been there for, for three weeks to advisor B, who's been there for 15 years, um, that customer experience is going to be very different where this can streamline it, it can, it can make it more consistent from one to the next. And it offers everything that you have to offer, um, where, where a lot of times if, if a customer comes in and says, I want the works package, the, the advisor just says, oh, okay, let's write you up for the works package and get you out the door, you know, and, and integrating this into that process is what takes your juice numbers. And, uh, really takes them up. So here's some results, real world results of a couple of different stores, um, several different OEMs. And what we're talking about here is just a one month sample okay, of what uh, the number of BG cans and kits that are menu driven products. So you take a look at that and you go, okay, a, a Toyota store, 2200 CPROs. The one on the top, store A there, uh, consistent presentations, uh, they sold 1,552 kits that month. Our store B only made 28 presentations, they sold 261 kits. Massive, massive increase. Um, you're talking this Ford store, you know, a much smaller Ford store in the top row, 1,000 BG services versus store B not doing well with the menu presentations, uh, you know, and it's, it's like this uh, every single store. And we have the ability to drill down and look at the real world sell through of these products. Um, the stores that consistently present menus sell usually 30 to 40% more total labor gross um, in terms of just, just the, the, um, the maintenance products. And you're talking, you know, sometimes a hundred percent more in terms of these menu driven products. It's crazy. Question for you. Yeah. Um, selling more things and service makes the store and hopefully the advisor money. What's the other upside for doing this as a standard offering procedure for an advisor, for example? Well, it just makes the, the process easier for them. Uh, it's, it's obviously job security because their, their numbers go up. They're, they're stronger in the reporting. That's a better reporting. Um, but for the customer, once they uh, get a taste of the BG Lifetime Protection Plan, 
once they understand that maintaining the vehicle and, and sort of are trained into the fact that maintaining your vehicle is less expensive than fixing it in the long run, um, all of that comes together to where the advisor, um, you know, now they're making more money, they're, they're more consistent, they're, they're tax love them because they're selling more stuff that the MPI doesn't have to come through and, and hammer them with, with the entire batch uh, after the fact, right? So, um, you know, I would say, I would say it's just that it's just, you know, it, it improves their entire quality of, of life at the dealership from revenue perspectives and, um, you know, just enjoying their job. Um, in your opinion, what percentage of dealerships successfully sell aftermarket products in the service track? Uh, well, we've got roughly 1200 that are currently enrolled in smart DMA. Not every single one of them does as well as these stores that we highlighted, obviously. Um, but what we've seen is a consistent 30 to 40% increase um, when we take a store from not on the digital menu program to on the digital menu program. And why don't more dealers do it if it's such a successful thing for the ones you do? Well, it, it, it's a fairly technical program. It does take a little bit of work on the setup end. Um, and getting the knowledge out there of what's available is, is probably the biggest challenge. You know, I think... Uh, our BG reps that are out in the field do a great job of talking about it, but not all of them are as um, integrated into the, the digital menu side of it. They're great with the, the on-card demos, the product knowledge, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is sort of a different animal here. Um, and we've been adding more and more staff to support this program, the Smart BMA. Um, I'm now one of six guys in the US and Canada that this is all we do every day is, is setting up digital menu programs. So all the BG reps have to do now is, is go out and find a great opportunity, you know, a dealer who already believes in our products and programs that we can roll this program in and take them from being a good BG customer to a great BG customer. And so if a dealer has say dealer effects or X time or a kiosk, can this be added to those? Yes, absolutely. Um, and as far as uh, kiosk goes, that is a new product that we'll be launching uh, fairly soon. I would say it'll be out um, maybe just after the first of the year. We're already locking in uh, pilot stores, so we will have our own um, uh, program for that. Okay. What was the other one that you mentioned, though? So I, I, let's say I'm a Honda store, I'm a Toyota store, I'm a Ford store. I'm using either X Time from Cox or I'm using right. Um yeah. Can I add these other products into... Uh, that system. I mean, I, I worked for the OFX. I'm pretty familiar with those and I'm familiar with X time as well. Could I add the BG products to the menu I'm already using? Yeah. So typically our, our system goes in alongside one of those other solutions. And, and it's usually because those solutions are more of what I would call a price list than a bin specific menu system where uh, you can get very detailed and offer the good, better, best and all of that stuff. So there's so much more flexibility with ours that most dealerships, and I would say probably 50% of our dealerships use X time for their, their check-in process. Yeah. So going out to the vehicle with an iPad, they're checking in the vehicle at the car um, on their iPad, and then they just flip to a separate tab, present our menu and, and carry on uh, in the process. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty seamless uh, process to utilize multiple tools. Ours just does the best of the menu side. And so that's where it's sort of found its niche. And, and what kind of support and education would you provide to a selling dealer that maybe is challenged with, you know, getting their service team to embrace this kind of stuff? Yeah, so um, we can show all kinds of reporting up front to get them bought into the results side of it. Um, we've got a, a really cool dashboard report. We have um, an iPhone app where you can look at your presentation percentages, penetration, all that kind of stuff. So there's a ton of information to get them in on that end um, and seeing what the results will be. But then beyond that, um, you know, we've got the ability to go in there with our network of BG guys out there in the field who, you know, they already know the account. They already are good, uh, have great relationships with their, their dealerships. Um, and they can go in there and do the training of, of the on the drive, you know, sit with them for a day in, in certain cases, especially when we launch. And, you know, work on the word tracks, work on the way that we're presenting, making sure that we're offering everything without being pushy um, and, and allowing the customer to choose what they want. Cool. And could you stop the share and since it's the time, I just got a couple of slides to go over. Was there yes, any absolutely. from the audience? Yep.
Actually, I see there's a question here. Uh, how do you see smart VMA checking in customers that prefer, prefer to do it by themselves? So that's why we are coming out with the, the kiosk option. So, um, you know, I've had a couple of dealers attempt to, um, you know, take our menu and offer it to the customer uh, and say, okay, pick which one you want. Um, and, and it hasn't been as successful as you might think, just because I think when customers sometimes look at our full menu package, uh, they see too many, too many things and need to be uh, coached on what they mean. Um, so that's where our, our uh, module for our kiosk is going to be a much more simplified version of what Smart BMA is. It's going to be just, you know, uh, uh, less, less offerings in there, um, simpler to read, a lot more graphical view. Uh, rather than kind of the line by line menu type of setup that we have on, on the other. And actually, I actually have a question to follow up on that. Uh, kiosks, do you, do you kind of see it to be the uh, almost the the enemy of what we're trying to do here? Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a real challenge. I've I've seen uh, some really funny posts on LinkedIn, like when GoMoto was really hot at the beginning. You know, you'd, you'd see a post and then a fixed ops director would say, hey, great, a Mickey Mouse uh, tool for a Mickey Mouse service department that can <laughs> customers. And, you know, honestly, I, I believe that, you know, there, there there is a place for it and there are some high volume stores where it's going to help. But uh, really, if we could go the other direction and continue the job of better training our service advisors, better refining our processes at the dealership, and building that personal relationship with the customer, that's going to take us further than a kiosk ever will. Perfect. Sure. Uh, was there any other questions from the audience and sensitive to time, Jeff? No, oh, I don't see any other questions there. Okay. Um, so next week's show, Titans of the Digital Auto Retail. We're bringing George the Greek from Stillville back, Carson Grant from Comox Valley Dodge, Marco from Audi Queensway, and Paul Long from... Uh, who's the Dodge father, coming back to spend some time on uh, how you stand out as a car salesperson, as a dealership, how you, I guess, nominate or have your sales team help grow your brand. Uh, you, if you didn't watch the episode with George live from Greece, you might want to rewatch it. It's a pretty funny episode. But uh, Marco, just so you know, he's done quite a bit of video about how to sell a lot of cars during COVID. Uh, he had a big data bit, a data bill, but very interesting. And all of all four are very active on social selling cars. So if you're in the sales side of the house or you own a dealership and you're looking for ways to stand out, uh, these four gentlemen will really be sharing some of their tips on how they were able to do it. Um, other shows coming up. Oh, we got one more video here. This is Ian Evertrop with Unlock Show and Better Speed. Take it away, Jeff. And this is Jeff Boyle with Auto Honda Vendors Week, and we're going to be having our good friend Ben Baker of your friend Martin. And Ben, tell us a little bit of what you're going to do on October 9th. Yeah, this is going to be a great conversation. I want to talk to people about where is marketing going, where we've been, where we are, where we're going, how to use new tools, how to get your teams to use the tools more effectively, how to get people into your dealerships, how to get them to know, like, and trust you, and how to walk out with a car. So that's what we're going to be talking about. This is no pitch. This is a straight conversation. And guess what? We'll answer any question you have. So bring them along with you. Thank you, everybody. Good morning, sir. And that's a wrap. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, uh, it's always been a pleasure. Gentlemen from uh, uh, Russ and Jeff and John, thank you so much. It's been a great show. And thanks, Ivor, for joining from the Norway there. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. You guys Thank have you a great everyone. week. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you. Yeah. Thank you. And of course, thanks to all our, our loyal followers, Mr. Latka, Mr. Barron, and of course, our friend from Calgary, Barry. <laughs>